let's talk about the EAPOR four-way handshake. The purpose of the four-way hand, uh, handshake is to create encryption keys in order to have secure encrypted communications between the wireless end devices and the access point. Each uh, uh, end device will have its own set of keys. Uh, these keys must work for unicast and multicast traffic. So what happens if you're configuring WPA or WPA2 uh, enterprise mode? For instance, you can use AO2.1x. The process will be the following. The end device will engage in open authentication with the access point. Then it will associate with the access point. And then EAP will kick in. Whatever EAP method you choose at the end of this EAP process, the radio server must provide a unique master session key or MSK that will be shared to the access point and only one end device. The end device will use the unique master session key or MSK to generate the pairwise master key or PMK that is the basis of the four-way handshake. The uh, access point will do the same. It will use the unique master session key or MSK to generate a pairwise master key or PMK that is the basis of the four-way handshake. What happens if you're configuring WPA or WPA2 personal mode? You will be using a pre-share key, and this pre-share key will be used to generate the pairwise master key or PMK, that is the basis of the four-way handshake. The access point will do the same. It will be creating the pairwise master key or PMK from the pre-share key. The PMK is the basis of the four-way handshake. So at the beginning of the four-way handshake, both the end device at the access point will have the pairwise master key or PMK. Uh, additionally to that, the uh, access point will create a group master key in order to encrypt uh, multicast traffic. The first stage of the four-way handshake consists of the access point sending its MAC address that is known as the authenticator address to the end device and sending what is known as a, a nonce. And this is a random generated uh, number that the access point will create. It is known as a nonce because it is uh, created by the authenticator. It is a number and it is used only once. At this point, the end device has enough information to generate what is known as the pairwise transient key or PTK that will be used to encrypt unicast traffic for this session. Uh, the, this PTK is actually a bag of keys. There are several keys here, not only one key, but for clarity, I will refer to it as a single key. Um, the second uh, stage of the forward handshake consists of the end device sending its MAC address to the access point that is known as the supplicant address and, and uh, uh, another uh, information that is known as S nonce. It is known as s nonce because it is created by the supplicant. It is a number and it is only used uh, only once. It is a random generated number created by the end device. Uh, from this uh, point uh, onwards, uh, this uh, four-way handshake will be using uh, MIC or message integrity check that consists of adding uh, a field that will uh, calculate a hash in order to let the endpoints that if someone tampered or changed the frame. Um, the access point will validate uh, the, the, the message integrity check and then at this point the AP has enough information to generate the uh, pairwise transit key which is the key that will uh, encrypt unicast traffic for this session. Uh, the access point will use the group master key in order to generate a group transient key or GTK that will be used to encrypt multicast traffic. So at the third stage of the four-way handshake, the access point will communicate this uh, GTK to the end device, but it will be encrypted and uh, MIC will be also used. The end device will validate MIC. 
and at this point the end device will have enough, enough information to encrypt unicast traffic using a pairwise transit key and encrypt multicast traffic using a group transit key. The fourth stage of this handshake consists of the end device sending an acknowledge to the uh, access point. Uh, at this moment, a uh, virtual control port is open, so um, the end device and the access point will kind of start communicating using encrypted traffic. The um, blueprint talks about configuring and validating this, which is a bit odd because when you configure uh, personal mode or enterprise mode, you will be uh, enabling it. So uh, that's it.